All right. Hello, welcome to the webinar. Um, get recognized as a healthy promoting school, the ro role of school nutrition staff. We're very excited that you have joined us this afternoon. During the webinar today, we'll provide you with an overview of the Healthier U.S. School Challenge Smarter Lunchrooms Initiative with a deeper dive of a few sections, as well as provide you with resources and guidance to help you apply for this initiative. We have two presenters for today's session. My name is Jocelyn Tony, and I am um, the field coordinator at Action Healthy Kids. My co-presenter today is Ebony James, a nutritionist with the United States Department of Agriculture's Food and Nutrition Service Child Nutrition Program. So let's just review some of the logistics before we get started. Once you're linked in, you'll see a control panel usually on the right side of your screen. You can use your telephone or speakers to listen to the presentation but everyone will be muted to avoid static and background interference. There's a dialog box on the bottom of your control panel. You can type questions into the dialog box as we're going along, and we'll try to get them answered later in the presentation or via email in the follow-up email after the webinar. The webinar is being recorded, so links to the recording, slides, and related handouts will be sent to you two to three business days after the webinar we can get started. Before we dive into the content for today's webinar, let's review the agenda. We'll first provide you with an overview of the Healthier U.S. School Challenge, focusing on where you can locate the application on the website, the application criteria, as well as the benefits to applying. We'll, we will then spend most of our time today diving a bit deeper into the components that relate to the school nutrition component of the application. And then finally, we'll end the webinar today with some tips for applying additional resources and then time for questions and answers. Since many attending this webinar are food service staff, the information will be directed towards them. If you are looking for more in-depth information on other sections of the application, at the end of this webinar, we'll direct you to a previous recorded webinar that provides um, resources on those other areas of the application. So, before we dive into today's content, I just want to give you guys a, a little background on Action Healthy Kids and ask Ebony to provide an overview of the United States Department of Agriculture's Food and Nutrition Service Child Nutrition Program. Action for Healthy Kids' mission is to fight childhood obesity, undernourishment, and physical inactivity by helping schools become healthier places. We are made up of moms, dads, teachers, students, school and community leaders, and school wellness experts who have banded together to create healthier learning environments for our children. And we believe that everyone has a part to play in ending the nation's childhood obesity epidemic. Our programs, tools, and resources make that possible. Action for Healthy Kids was founded in 2002 by former Surgeon General David Thatcher. Today we have more than 90,000 members. We also partner with dozens of professional associations, government agencies, and corporations at the national and local level. We refer to our overarching organizational goal as the Every Kid Healthy Goal. That is our goal that all 130,000 plus U.S. schools provide healthy food, quality health, and physical education and comprehensive physical activity for all 55 million students by the year 2030. Yes, that's quite a goal, and it's a visionary goal. We believe that through our work with our partners, schools, and constituents, we can together make sure all schools provide a healthy environment for our students. The Healthier U.S. School Challenge Smarter Lunchrooms Initiative is an opportunity to certify your school as a health-promoting, ultimately working towards every kid healthy goal. The United States Department of Agriculture is one of our national partners, so at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Ebony to talk a little bit about her department at the USDA and introduce us to the Healthier U.S. School Challenge Smarter Lunchrooms Initiative. Ebony? All right. Thanks, Jocelyn. 
The USDA Food and Nutrition Service administers several programs that provide healthy food to children, including the National School Lunch Program, the School Breakfast Program, the Child and Adult Care Food Program, the Summer Food Service Program, the Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Program, and the Special Milk Program. These programs are administered by state agencies, and each of these programs helps fight hunger and obesity by reimbursing organizations such as schools, child care centers, and after-school programs for providing healthy meals to children. The Healthier U.S. School Challenge Smarter Lunchrooms is a voluntary initiative established in 2004 under the Team Nutrition Initiative to recognize schools in the National School Lunch and School Breakfast programs that have created healthier school environments through the promotion of nutrition and physical activity. The Healthier U.S. School Challenge Smarter Lunchrooms emphasizes developing lifetime healthy habits. Schools that receive this recognition demonstrate to the community a commitment to school health. Schools receiving this award commit to meeting the criteria throughout their four-year certification period. The criteria is consistent with the National School Lunch Program and School Breakfast Program meal pattern requirements. The initiative recognizes schools that meet meal pattern requirements, schools that are actively implementing smarter lunchroom techniques, and that are going above and beyond the federal requirements for smart snacks and the local wellness policy. Because the Healthier U.S. School Challenge Smarter Lunchrooms is a part of the Team Nutrition Initiative, all schools must be enrolled with Team Nutrition to be eligible to apply. The criteria is specific for four levels of recognition, and those include bronze, silver, gold, and gold award of distinction. In 2010, this initiative caught the eye of the Let's Move campaign headed by First Lady Michelle Obama. When First Lady introduced Let's Move and adopted Healthier U.S. School Challenge under its umbrella, monetary incentives were also made available to those schools that would be recognized. Schools began to receive monetary incentives for meeting the required criteria in 2010. Incentives include $500 for the bronze level, $1,000 for the silver level, $1,500 for the gold level, and $2,000 for the gold award of distinction level. To date, there are currently certified 5,544 schools for the challenge. We have 3,779 bronze awardees, 1,158 silver, 366 gold, and 241 gold award of distinction. And these numbers reflect 409 schools that are certified under the 2014 criteria. Keep in mind that this chart shows the growth and decrease in the number of certified schools by award levels as of October 2013, October 2014, October 2015, and most recently February 2016. Also remember that because schools are certified for four years, the numbers do fluctuate some as schools expire. So in order to keep our numbers steady, we send out reminder emails at nine months, six months, three months, and one month intervals before the school's award expires in hopes that the school will reapply at the same level or at a higher level and that they, they will maintain their certification status. As I mentioned, schools receive monetary incentives for applying for this initiative, but let's talk through some of the other perks that awardees receive. Schools recognized as Healthier U.S. School Challenge awardees receive a display banner. They receive a certificate signed by the Secretary of Agriculture and is mounted in a protective plaque. They also receive national recognition on the Team Nutrition website and a congratulatory letter or card signed by First Lady Michelle Obama. Along with these wonderful Centers, there are many benefits of the Healthier U.S. School Challenge Smarter Lunchrooms. Some of these benefits include building school spirit and creating positive publicity. The Healthier U.S. School Challenge is a great way to demonstrate to the community the changes your school has made to become a healthier place for kids, as well as how your school is having on the health and well-being of students and their families. It's also an opportunity to celebrate, in a healthy way of course, your school's success in improving health and wellness opportunities before, during, and after the school day. By receiving positive national recognition and building school spirit, the Healthier U.S. School Challenge can increase support for and momentum around school wellness initiatives. It's a way to make your efforts known and garner that additional support to continue the great work your school is doing around health and wellness. The Healthier U.S. 
School Challenge supports the learning connection, the connection between healthy eating, physical activity, and academic achievement. Research has taught us that healthy kids are better learners. Schools that offer students healthier food and more time to be active are seeing increasing fitness levels, better student behavior, higher test scores, and even higher graduation rates. And kids who don't eat nutritiously and who don't enjoy regular physical activity are at an academic disadvantage. The Healthier U.S. School Challenge Smarter Lunchroom supports educational outcomes as it helps to ensure that students are healthy and that they're ready to learn. Finally, taking the challenge is a way for your school to be a leader in the efforts to end childhood obesity. By providing a healthy environment early on, we can help kids develop the habits necessary to lead a long and healthy life. Right now, I'm going to turn it over to Jocelyn to discuss more about the Healthier U.S. School Challenge application and the general criteria. Great. Thanks, Ebony. The Healthier U.S. School Challenge Smarter Lunchroom criteria focuses on the entire school environment. The following areas also have established criteria to impact students at school, home, and in the community. Today, we will only focus on the school nutrition components of the application. We will share resources at the end where you can get more information about the other components that mentioned. Each of the sections make up the application that are listed on your screen. We're going to dive deep into the sections that are listed in green. So now that we've provided a brief overview of the initiative and its benefits, we'll start to dive in to the application criteria. The criteria listed on your slide are for all award levels. So first, schools must participate in the school breakfast program in the national school lunch program, meet meal pattern requirements, and have no outstanding corrective actions. The school food authority must also be certified for additional six cent reimbursement. Additionally, schools must be actively implementing a required number of smarter lunchroom techniques at every award level. Smart snack criteria has also been put in place for every award level. These criteria are centered around meeting smart snacks and school nutrition standards but go a step further at each award level by focusing on the area of fundraising, advertising, and training. These include running each food label served and offered at schools through the Smart Snack Calculator, and we'll dive deeper into Smart Snacks and Smarter Lunchrooms. As I mentioned earlier, um, schools must also participate in the school breakfast program and school national National School Lunch Program. So on your screen, you'll see the criteria around minimum average daily participation rates in these programs to be eligible for the various award levels of the Healthier U.S. School Challenge Smarter Lunchrooms Initiative. As you'll note in the chart, um, it does not require any average daily participation rate for the bronze level. However, it does require an ADP rate for the silver, gold, and gold award of distinction levels for both breakfast and lunch. Also to note, average daily participation in the National School Lunch Program and School Breakfast Program is based on attendance rather than enrollment. So calculating ADP in this manner is considered to be fair to schools as it does not include children that are absent or do not eat lunch or breakfast in the calculation. The final thing I would like to note on the slide is that in order to meet any level of award, schools must achieve the awards, award levels ADP for both breakfast and lunch. Lunch has higher ADPs than breakfast. So for example, if your school meets the ADP for lunch to apply for the gold award, but does not meet the ADP for breakfast or that award level, your school will then not be eligible to apply for the gold award. For each section of the application that we discuss, we will provide a few tips and tricks to help you get started. So let's review a few tips and tricks for the general criteria and ADP section of the application. First, review the application and just jot down a few notes to help you determine the appropriate award level for your school. You can gather your ADP information and ensure you meet all general criteria. Remember that there is no ADP requirement for bronze. And then lastly, the award level you should apply for is the lowest level you checked in a category. 
For example, again, if you determine you could apply for bronze under ADP, but apply for silver under Smart Snacks, you should submit your application for the bronze level. So at this time, um, I'm going to pass it back over to Ebony to explain team nutrition and how it relates to the Healthier U.S. School Challenge Mother Launch Rooms Initiative. All right. Thank you again, Jocelyn. All schools must be enrolled with Team Nutrition to be eligible to apply for the Healthier U.S. School Challenge Smarter Lunchrooms. So let's talk a little bit about what Team Nutrition encompasses. Team Nutrition is an integrated, behavior-based, comprehensive plan for promoting nutrition among children. This plan involves schools, parents, and the community in efforts to continuously improve school meals and to promote the health and education of 50 million school children nationwide. The goal of Team Nutrition is to improve children's lifelong eating and physical activity habits by using the principles of the Dietary Guidelines for Americans and My Plate. Schools that are enrolled in Team Nutrition receive training and technical assistance for healthy meals, nutrition education resources, school and community support, and links to partners and supporters. The Healthier U.S. School Challenge Smarter Lunchrooms was born out of the Team Nutrition Initiative to encourage and bring to the forefront the outstanding efforts of schools across the country that are creating and sustaining a healthy school environment. Team Nutrition provides materials for schools that, to help meet the nutrition education requirement. Later we will discuss that for all grade levels, nutrition education should be offered through multiple channels. While the Healthier U.S. School Challenge Model Lunchrooms identifies the classroom, the cafeteria, and the home as the three primary channels to communicate nutrition ed, there are a variety of other communication channels that can be utilized to ensure the message gets across to students and their families. So on your slide, you'll see just a few examples of the various ways kids receive messages about food and physical activity. And what we know is that utilizing multiple communication channels increases the number of times and ways children receive nutrition messages. Ultimately, the more time kids hear these messages, the more likely they are to act upon these messages. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some of our newest resources. One of the, our newest resources is the Team Nutrition My Plate eBooks, which are now available. These free eBooks teach young children about the My Plate food groups and include interactive features to test comprehension and they make learning fun. These books are eBook versions of Team Nutrition publications that were widely popular in print and as PDFs. There are eight books in total, and each ebook includes audio narration that highlights the text as it's read aloud. They include drawing and coloring palettes. They include colorful characters and interactive games and mazes. Instructions on how to open and read these ebooks using different devices can be found on the Team Nutrition website, and the address is on the screen. On this next slide, these are a few examples of the interactive activities in the ebooks. On the top left, we have the refrigerator sorting game and the two bike club, where the shelves in the refrigerator are labeled with the names of the food groups, and children must drag the food to the correct food group. All of the books include audio icons on the pages, so when the icon is tapped, the books are narrated out loud and the corresponding text is highlighted. You can see this in the example of the fruit pages on the right side of the slide. All the books have the drawing feature in the top left of each page, so when you turn the page, the palette closes, and then when you tap on the pencil, the palette opens and the reader can draw on the page using their finger or the mouse. In the Discover My Plate books, opening the palette turns the page from full color into black and white, so it turns it into a coloring book. Each book also has a maze where the child must tap on foods from a food group as they draw their way out of the maze. So, so those are just some of the interactive activities within the books. Another feature I'd like to highlight is that the Discover My Plate books include sight words that are appropriate for kindergarten level students. All of the books include audio icons on the pages, as I've said, and when the icon is tapped, the books are narrated and the text is highlighted. So directions for activities are also narrated with the synchronized highlighting, along with words that are used in many of the illustrations. 
And next I'm going to talk about another set of materials that we have that's going to be available very soon. Um, the focus is on nutrition education and summer meals. Research has shown that children consume fewer vegetables and more added sugar and they also watch more television during the summer months and that many children experience rapid gains in body mass index during the summer compared to the time during the school year. Research has also shown us that offering activities at summer meal sites is a promising strategy for increasing participation in summer meal programs. And of course, kids are drawn to games, challenges, food preparation, and food tasting activities. So for those reasons, Teen Nutrition is offering a host of resources that can be used to introduce fun, easy, and nutrition-focused activity and messages at summer meal sites for those of you who may be continuing on the journey of providing nutrition to our kids during the summer months. So these materials have been tested with focus group interviews as well as pilot testing. Team nutrition resources were also reviewed by a host of professionals from various entities, government agencies, and non-governmental agencies as well. Before I start talking about the specific pieces of the kit, I want to share the key nutrition messages of the program. The key messages of the Summer Food Summer Moves Kit are consistent with the Dietary Guidelines for Americans 2015 to 2020 and target behaviors associated with childhood obesity prevention. And they include helping children choose water instead of sugar-sweetened beverages, choosing more fruits and vegetables at meals and snacks, limiting screen time to no more than one to two hours per day, and getting at least 60 minutes of physical activity each day. These messages are feasible to integrate into fun and entertaining activities that can be implemented in summer meal settings, which may have bearable or limited operating hours and staff with little training in nutrition education. So, and we also found out that our focus group research, parents confirmed their message about these behaviors resonated with parents as well. So the first pieces that I would like to share are the Take a Healthy Summer Break infographic and the parent brochure entitled This Summer, Eat Smart to Play Hard. And these materials are designed for schools and community partners to distribute to families at the end of the school year to encourage healthy habits and provide information about summer meal programs. In addition to the infographic and the parent's guide, FNS is also planning to release new team nutrition education materials um, in a kit called the Summer Food Summer Moves Kit and this includes an operator activity guide with nutrition education activity, kid-friendly recipes, it comes with seven educational posters, six types of promotional flyers, an activity placemat, and a set of six different educational handouts for parents. Um, the kit is designed to be used in a variety of types of summer meal sites ranging from parks to schools to community or church-based settings and will be available in both English and Spanish. The materials are scheduled for online release sometime in March with hard copies available for order by the summer of this year. So we're just going to flip through the slides just so you can see that um, this kit also includes recipes and tasting ideas for the summertime. And then the next slide has just a snapshot of the covers of the family activity guides. And then the following slide has some snapshots of the posters that are available through this kit. And finally, the next slide has the snapshot of the placemat that is available. So we just encourage you, you know, these are some tips. Sign up for Team Nutrition Online. It's a no-cost program. Once you receive your materials that you order using our online resource order form, be sure to share with school staff. If you're unsure if your school is already a Team Nutrition school, you can look up your Team Nutrition status in an online database, and that link will be shared with you in a follow-up email following this webinar. And when you submit your Health Air U.S. School Challenge Smarter Lunchroom application, remember schools must include a copy of their team nutrition enrollment form. At this time, I'm going to pass it back over to Jocelyn to walk us through the Smarter Lunchroom's component of the application. Let's cover one more section before we pause for questions. As a reminder, please submit your questions in the question box on the right-hand side of your screen. And in the meantime, let's address the Smarter Lunchroom's component of the initiative. Perfect. Thank you, Ebony. So by 
Let's start this uh, section of the application by imagining your favorite place to eat. So think about some of these things when you're thinking about the, your favorite place to eat. What does it look like? What does it feel like? How does it smell? What does it sound like? Now think about what that experience was like for you. Were you sitting at your parents' table? Were you in your favorite restaurant? Now imagine a school lunchroom. Do you have the same experience? Think about the reasons as to why or why not. So now we're going to jump into the Slaughter Lunchrooms. Slaughter Lunchrooms is a USDA-funded research center based out of the Cornell University that works to equip school lunchrooms with evidence-based tools that improve child eating behaviors and thus improves the health of children. It uses six key principles that are based on research on various environmental cues, so physical and social, that influence eating behaviors. Research shows that most of our food decisions are heavily influenced by our environment, such as the size of the container we eat from or what everyone else is eating versus our own internal hunger cues. The research center works to identify and develop practical evidence-based strategies to shape school environments. Research is showing that lunchrooms can be rearranged to nudge students to make healthier choices. We'll share the link to um, smarter lunchrooms in the follow-up materials. In 2014, the, US, or the Healthier U.S. School Challenge was renamed the Healthier U.S. School Challenge Smarter Lunchrooms to incorporate the Smarter Lunchroom component. There are a few key pieces that play into the lunchroom that is smart. First, lunchrooms should be designed to gently encourage the decisions we want to see our students make. For example, drinking white milk over chocolate milk or grabbing a piece of fruit instead of a bag of chips. Also, it makes make smart changes that are little to no cost. It encourages future healthy choices instead of banning certain foods, and lastly, make the lunchroom a place where we want to eat. So let's briefly talk through the six principles to creating a smarter lunchroom. First, manage portion sizes. For example, offer baby carrots, 100 calorie snack packs, um, small condiment packages instead of a large tub to manage portion sizes. The next principle is increase convenience by making snack packs, including small apples, baby carrots, yogurt parfaits, salad shakers, etc. The third principle is improve visibility. So put healthy food up front and make indulgent food in the back. For example, putting chips or cookies behind the registers so students have to ask for them in a bowl of whole fruit next to the register. The fourth principle is enhance taste expectations by creating fun, imaginative names. For example, calling carrots x-ray carrots or changing a bean burrito to big bad bean burrito. This small change actually increased burrito consumption by more than 40%, which could have been more, but they actually ended up selling out of the um, big bad bean burrito in the second meal period. The fifth Principle is utilize suggestive selling. Hard sell for first person in the line by asking if they would like to add fruit or a vegetable of the day, and then continuing this every two to three minutes later. That smart pricing strategies is the last principle. So bundle together strong selling foods with less strong sellers to create a combo meal. On your screen are a few data highlights to show you how smarter lunchroom techniques really work. I'm going to highlight just a few. So for example, moving and highlighting fruit increased sales of fruit by up to 102%. Naming vegetables and displaying the new names with the food increased selection of vegetables between um, 40 to 70%. The number of students consuming healthy items increased by 35% after the introduction of a healthy choices only convenience line. And as you can see, there are more on your screen. 
So to meet the smarter lunchrooms criteria for the HUSIC application, all schools applying um, must fill out the Smarter Lunchroom Self-Assessment Scorecard, which is a two-page document that contains 100 statements that are considered to be Smarter Lunchroom techniques. Applicants will be asked to check off those statements that they are currently implementing in their school. So I'll give you a quick example. One of the statements on the scorecard is daily fruit options are available in at least two different locations on each service line. So if this is happening in your school's lunchroom, you can simply check it off um, on the scorecard if you're already currently implementing it. This tool is intended to help you evaluate your lunchroom, congratulate yourself for the things you're doing well, and then identify areas of opportunity for improvement. The number of techniques from the scorecard that um, the school must implement is dependent upon the award level. So for bronze, applicants must select at least 30 action items. Silver and gold applicants must select 50 action items. And then gold award of distinction applicants must select 70 items. Documentation that the school is meeting this criteria shall um, include a copy of the completed scorecard in a brief summary with two to three photos describing the school's overall Smarter Lunchrooms efforts. I wanted to draw your attention to how the award levels are determined for smarter launch rooms. So the requirements to become recognized as bronze, silver, gold, and gold award of distinction through the Healthier U.S. School Challenge Smarter Launch Rooms is different than what's listed on the Smarter Launch Rooms self-assessment scorecard. This is because the Smarter Launch Rooms is a separate initiative from the Healthier U.S. School Challenge and has different award levels. Therefore, use the criteria that is listed in the Healthier U.S. School Challenge Smarter Lunchrooms application to determine your award level. Let's talk through some tips for getting the Smarter Lunchroom scorecard started. So first, it's suggested that you arrive to the cafeteria 10 to 15 minutes before service. It is best to take between 20 and 30 photos to follow um, by following the photo checklist so that you have something to reference when you're done observing. Within that 10 to 15 minutes, you can speak with the kitchen manager or cafeteria monitors to get a feel for the space and how lunch is typically served. You can observe at least one lunch period before starting the scorecard or to ensure that you're talking or taking in all that is happening in the cafeteria. After observing one lunch, you can begin to mark the items on your scorecard that you are seeing at that time. You can then circle the, um, that boxes that are not present or you may want to work on in the future. It is suggested that you speak with your servers or cafeteria monitors to answer some of the questions that are listed on the scorecard. This process is done best when two or three people observe the cafeteria at different times and then compare scorecards. Note that there that only one scorecard must be completed and turned in with your Healthier U.S. School Challenge Smarter Lunchroom application. It is recommended that you complete your scorecard once a year. Um, a few tips and tricks. The Smarter Lunchroom scorecard is a great first step to start your application. So you can start by sending um, your food service staff to a Smarter Lunchrooms training in your state to get a grasp on the concepts and make little to no cost changes in your cafeteria. Use the scorecard as a tool to improve. It is recommended, again, that you complete it once a year, but consider doing it twice or more to check if your school improvements are on track. Consider asking students to complete the assessment and analyze the results. Ask your students to present ways to improve their lunchroom to you and your food service staff. For more ideas, um, you can definitely check out the Smarter Lunchrooms Eat Better Activity and Game On. This link will also be sent in the follow-up email. Some things to remember, the national average is a 41 out of 100, and schools um, cannot score a 100. Also, the scoring listed on the self-assessment scorecard is not the same as the scoring as the HUSIC. Um, Smarter Lunchrooms application. And then lastly, the scorecard is a live action tool. It only measures one moment in time, 
which is why it's recommended to do it um, once a year. On your screen, you'll just see a few of the links that we'll be sharing with you guys in the follow-up email after the webinar. But just so you guys know, they have um, trainings available as well as webinars and resources. And right now, I'm going to turn it over to Ebony to cover the Smart Snacks component of the initiative. All right. Thank you, Jocelyn. Well, I'm just going to go over the criteria related to Smart Snacks. So for the first one, the criteria for all award levels this includes bronze, silver, gold, and gold award of distinction. All foods and beverages sold to students during the school day meet or exceed the USDA nutrition standards for all foods and beverages sold to students. And this is commonly called Smart Snacks in School. The school day extends from midnight to 30 minutes past the end of the official school day. And this is the requirement for all award levels. This includes a la carte, vending, school stores, snack or food carts, and any food-based fundraising. School follows fundraising exemptions and guidance set by their state agency, which also must adhere to the federal Smart Snacks and School requirements. So if a school does not sell competitive foods but participates in fundraising, then the fundraising must follow the federal Smart Snacks standards. The Smart Snacks criteria slightly differs between each award level, so I wanted to talk a couple minutes just to take a couple minutes to talk through these differences. The bronze and silver requirements are the same, so let's talk about those requirements now. In addition to meeting the federal Smart Snack standards, schools must also, one, offer training on the Smart Snack standards annually to all individuals who are involved in the sale of foods to students on the school campus during the school day. And they must also avoid advertising or marketing foods and beverages that do not meet Smart Snacks criteria to students. For example, schools should not post signs or marketing materials promoting these foods that are visible to students on the school campus during the school day. To meet the criteria to apply for the Healthier U.S. School Challenge Smarter Lunchroom, schools should submit evidence of a written policy and or written communication or training for school staff and parent organizations that addresses food and beverage marketing in schools. Let's move on to the criteria to apply for the gold level. First, the school must meet the criteria for silver and bronze that we just discussed. They must also only permit food-related fundraisers that meet USDA Smart Snack standards, even if their state allows exemptions. So as we mentioned earlier, states are allowed to have a certain number of food fundraisers that can be exempt from meeting the Smart Snacks requirements. But schools that apply for gold must ensure that all food fundraisers meet Smart Snacks requirements. We'll send the link on your screen in the follow-up material so you can confirm the number of exemptions your state allows. The second thing that these schools must do if they're applying for the goal level is that if foods and beverages are sold to students on the school campus at events outside of the school day, such as a sporting event or after school activity or award ceremony, then water, fruits, and or vegetables are also offered and promoted as options. In order to apply for this level, schools must provide evidence of a written school policy and or instructions for those that sell foods to students on the school campus. And finally, the Gold Award of Distinction level. In order to meet this level, schools must meet the Gold criteria and the majority, which means greater than 50%, of their school-sponsored fundraising events conducted outside of the school day includes only non-food items or only foods and beverages that meet or exceed the USDA Smart Snacks and School Nutrition Standards. To, to apply for this level, you must include a list of school-sponsored fundraisers during the past year and written policy or guidance that addresses fundraising events occurring outside of the school day. To help you determine whether or not they, your snacks meet the Smart Snacks requirements, you can use the Smart Snacks calculator, which was developed by the Alliance for a Healthier Generation with the help of the United States Department of Agriculture. This calculator allows you to look at the Nutrition Facts panel, answer a few questions, and determine whether your snack, side, or entree item meets the federal guidelines for Smart Snacks. This calculator has been determined by USDA Food and Nutrition Service to be accurate in assessing product compliance with the federal requirements for Smart Snacks in schools. 
samples. The calculator can be used on food and beverages. We'll share the link to the Smart Snacks calculator in the follow-up materials. Now let's walk through an example using the Smart Snacks calculator. The first step is to find all nutrition labels for all food and beverages sold to students during the school day. This includes a la carte vending, school stores, snacks, or food carts, and any food-based fundraising. For this example, we are looking at Funky Monkey Dried Fruit Snack Packages. Step two entails logging onto the Smart Snacks calculator website and beginning to follow the prompts. The first prompt asks, what my product is. If you are unsure, click on the blue eye next to the answers and a box will pop up defining that type of product. For this example, my product is a snack. If you continue to follow the prompts, the calculator will then ask you what is the first ingredient of your product. It is important to refer to the label's ingredient statement. If the first ingredient is water, then use the second ingredient to choose one of the options. Again, refer to the blue eye next to each choice if needing a clarification how on each ingredient is defined. For our example, you can see, if you look where the red is circled, you can see that the first ingredient is fruit. Continuing to follow the prompts, the calculator then asks you what type of fruit is the product. In order to determine which type of dried fruit fruit, you must refer to the label again. Since there were two types of dry fruit to choose from, I used the blue eye to determine the correct option. For example, you can see that I chose dried fruit with no added nutritive sweeteners or only those required for processing. For the next step, now you can enter in your nutrition facts and you use your label to do this. And Finally, for the last step, it will tell you if your product is compliant or denied. If it is compliant, it will ask you to fill in the brand, serving size, product type, and first ingredient of your product. It will create a nutrition label that is shown on the right side of your screen. It is very important that you print each of these out to send in with your Healthier U.S. School Challenge Smarter Lunchroom application along with the actual food product label. Every food and beverage label that are sold to students during the school day needs to go through the calculator. This includes a la carte items, vending items, school store snack or food cart items, and any food-based fundraising items. So now we're going to go over a few tips and tricks before you get started. This can be a time-consuming section, depending on how many snacks your school sells, so we suggest starting this section early. If you're looking to offer new healthy snacks, consider checking out the Smart Snack Standards Activity in Action for Healthy Kids Game One program, or use the Alliance Product Navigator to pick from a list of snacks that are Smart Snack approved. Another suggestion is to resort research your state's exemptions to know how many food fundraisers that don't meet Smart Snack standards are allowed. Also, encourage students in nutrition classes or volunteers to help input food information to the Smart Snack calculator. You can all divide and conquer. Also, less paperwork. Being awarded through Healthier U.S. School Challenge proves that you meet Smart Snack standards, which is required by all schools participating in the National School Meal Program. If your district is Healthier U.S. School Challenge certified, you won't have to submit the Smart Snacks portion of your state's administrative review. And remember, even if a school doesn't sell a la carte items or have vending machines, food sold in fundraisers must be included in this section. Before we have Jocelyn walk everyone through the other criteria for excellence, let's pause and check in with Heidi. Do we have any questions, Heidi? Heidi, are you still on mute? Yes, I'm on mute. Sorry about that. Um, question, some questions have been coming in, but we've been addressing them on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So just a quick reminder, if you do have um, other questions that are either specific to your situation or um, just general questions about the application, definitely submit those through the question box. But for now, um, Jocelyn, I'll turn it back to you and uh, we can continue with the webinar. Great. Thanks, Heidi. We've reached the last component of the application that we're covering on this webinar. Woohoo! Um, the final application component is the other criteria for excellence. So we'll dive right in. There are three categories within the other criteria of excellence. However, today we're only going to focus on the school food service. 
excellent category. So, sorry. There are a total of 14 options to choose from in this section. To qualify for the bronze level, your school must meet two of the 14 options. For silver, you must meet four of the 14 options. And for gold, you must meet six of the options. Then for gold award of distinction, your school must meet eight of the options or more um, in one week. You must meet eight of the options in more than one of the categories. So like I mentioned, we're going to just talk through school food service of excellence. There are five options in this category. The first, your school um, food service manager is a certified food handler. This can be a local or national certification that must be attached to the Healthier U.S. School Challenge application. The second option is your school nutrition program director meets or exceeds the minimum education standards required by the professional standards rule, final rule requirement. And then the third option is all school nutrition program directors, managers, and staff meet or exceed the annual continuing education or training hours required by the professional standards final rule requirement. The fourth option um, that you can pick is your school is implementing at least one aspect of the Farm to School initiative. So for this option, schools can choose one or more of the aspects listed on this um, slide. So the first option is local and or regional products are incorporated into the school meal program. Second, messages about agriculture and nutrition are reinforced throughout the learning environment. Third, the school hosts a school garden. Fourth, the school hosts field trips to local farms. And then finally, the school utilizes promotions or special events, such as tastings that highlight the local and or regional products. And then the final option in this category is um, the final, or the school food service excellence for this, I'm sorry, and the final option is that the school has joined the U.S. Food Waste Challenge to recognize efforts to reduce food waste. So now that we've talked through the related category of um, other criteria for excellence, um, I just wanted to give you guys um, a resource. This is new. It's a new guide to professional standards for school nutrition programs. In this um, must-see guide, it includes information about the final rule on professional standards for school nutrition program personnel as it pertains to state agencies, school food authorities, and school nutrition professionals. It also includes tips on where to find trainings, examples of how the, to meet the training standards, easy to read tables, and um, reproducible handouts. So this is a really great tool um, that U.S. Food Service Director or Manager can utilize. Some quick tips um, and tricks for this section of the application. Um, it requires quite a bit of documentation from multiple people, so we recommend you convening with your school health team once completing the parts that you've filled out as a food service staff. You can also gather all supporting documentation. So for example, as I mentioned, um, the certificates, as well as you'll need a, your wellness policy and the Smarter Lunchroom scorecard and all your smart snack calculator labels. And then be as thorough as possible as you fill out the application. As a food service staff, you will be more knowledgeable at the food service component, so be sure to connect with your PE teacher or school administrator to help complete other areas. And then all activities that are listed in the application should have already occurred this school year or be ongoing. So before we end the webinar today, Ebony will talk briefly through the application process and then give you some quick tips and resources for applying. Ebony. All right, thanks Jocelyn. So here's a quick look at the application process. 
once a school applies, um, once they complete the application, either the school or the school district, the district then reviews the application, then they send that application to the state agency for additional review. Once the state agency approves the application, bronze and silver and gold applications are sent to the USDA regional office for the final round of review. All gold award of distinction applications are sent from the regional office directly to the national USDA office for final review. Once the USDA, either regional or national office, approves the application, the school is certified and announced, and announcements are usually made once a month. And sometimes during that process, there may be some information that might be missing, or um, we just might need some clarification on something. So at any one of those levels, someone may go back to the school or to the district to ask for more information, um, which is fine to do. We rarely deny an application. Our motto is that we offer technical assistance in order to get the application to the place where it needs to be. And sometimes, like I said, it could just be a question that just needed more information. So please, we encourage you to you know, send those applications in and don't be afraid to apply. All right, schools can apply for their own school or districts can apply for several or all schools in their district at one time. If applying from the district level, there are sections of the application that may be standardized as seen on your screen. What can be standardized will vary depending on your district, but typically the sections for food service related staff can be standardized, can be standardized except for the Smarter Lunchroom Scorecard, which we do like that information to be specific. Um, for the school. When turning in the applications for a district, please provide the district school list document with the applications, and this form can be downloaded at the website that's listed on your screen. And if you scroll to the, once you click on that link, which we will provide to you, once you scroll to the bottom of the website, it's the third link. So that's just a, just a note, so you won't get lost on the page. All right, so here are a couple of tips to help you apply. First, join Team Nutrition. Using the link provided on the screen, which will also be provided to you, you register online to join Team Nutrition. It's a simple pro process that takes about five minutes to complete. Then once you join, you will not only receive access to the Team Nutrition materials that can be shared with your school staff, but you will also satisfy one criteria for applying for the Healthier U.S. School Challenge Smarter Lunchroom. Next, pull together your team, divide and conquer. Schools who are successful in applying for the application, pull together a team that includes food service personnel, the physical education and or health teacher, the principal, a parent representative, even students. This group can help you brain, help your school brainstorm and list all your school's various health and wellness initiatives, as well as physically complete the various components of the application. This will help your school complete the application more quickly, efficiently, and completely than if it was just one person doing it all alone. And then take some time to review the application. You might discover that you already meet all the criteria. Alternatively, you might find that you are one or two criteria away from applying for a higher certification level. Use the Healthier U.S. School Challenge as an opportunity to build upon existing school wellness initiatives or to expand in your school's wellness program. Make sure you thoroughly understand the criteria before completing the application. As mentioned earlier, Team Nutrition has great resources to support those applying for the Healthier U.S. School Challenge Smarter Lunchrooms. The Healthier U.S. School Challenge website has a handy criteria chart that lists all the criteria in one place, a fabulous and colorful brochure you can order or download for no cost to share with everyone you know. There's past webinars detailing the ins and outs of meeting each and every criteria and an application that makes it very easy to apply. Nutrition education resources are colorful and engaging, targets multiple grade levels based on the dietary guidelines and my plate, and they're free to download or order. So make sure you share the word about this great recognition program and utilize these resources to help you succeed. And just to give you a little bit more information, just briefly about how Action for Healthy Kids and USDA is working together. Action for Healthy Kids is promoting the Healthier U.S. School Challenge Smarter Lunchroom and utilizing USDA resources as well as their own resources that have been reviewed by our Food and Nutrition Service staff. USDA fully supports state agencies partnering with Action for Healthy Kids state coordinators in their states to promote the challenge as they are able to do so. It's not a requirement, but if it's something that 
state coordinators and states, if they want to do it, we fully encourage that. If you're a school or a district listening to this webinar, you can reach out to Action for Healthy Kids state coordinators to receive support in completing the application, and we will share how to contact them in the follow-up email that we send you. FNS has reviewed the resources and training materials that Action for Healthy Kids is promoting and that this push for schools to become certified as Healthier U.S. School Challenge Schools is a part of a larger campaign that was described earlier in the webinar, the Every Kid Healthy campaign. We have provided the FNS regional offices with a listing of the Action for Healthy Kids state coordinators and regional managers that they can share with their state agencies to assist in bridging that communication and to do decrease some of the duplicative efforts because we're all working towards the same goal. We all want our children to be healthy. We all want our school environments and our communities to be healthy. So we're just looking for even more ways to do that. Great. In addition to um, Action for Healthy Kids State Coordinators, I wanted to quickly highlight a few free um, resources from Action for Healthy Kids that you can utilize to help meet the criteria for the Healthier U.S. School Challenge Smarter Lunchrooms. The first resource is the Game On Program. The Game On Program was developed to support schools, staff, students, and families in incorporating healthy food choices and physical activity into their daily lives and school environment with the ultimate goal of getting nationally recognized as a health-promoting school. Game On has more than 70 eat better and move more activities, such as hosting a taste test, family fun days, brain breaks, rethink your drink. Each of these activities are organized into a school blueprint, so schools can search for activities based on which area of school they want to make healthier. GAMON was recently aligned with the Healthier U.S. School Challenge, so you'll find resources and ideas to meet all of the initiative's criteria. Within GAMON, there are a number of resources that have been specifically designed to help your school be successful in applying for the Healthier U.S. School Challenge Smarter Lunchrooms Initiative. For example, Action for Healthy Kids has created a sample application tip sheets for each component of the application, checklists to help your school determine what level you should apply for, and guidance on how to divide up the application among your school health team. In addition, check out our mini webinar series where we cover each component of the application in about 10 or so minutes. And then finally, we also continually offer resources on our social media pages. So I encourage you to follow us on whatever form of social media you use, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, Flickr, and or YouTube. And finally, if you feel like you want more information specifically around some of the criteria we didn't dive into, listen to our webinar from November. Um, we'll send the link to um, this webinar in our follow-up materials. It really provides an overview of every section of the application. And right now I'm going to pause really quick and ask Heidi if we have any questions. Sure, we do have a couple of questions. Um, the first one is for Ebony. So Ebony, is there an application deadline? No, there's no application deadline. Um, it's just a continuous process. Just fill out the application and send it in. Great. Um, perfect. And then the next question, um, it's more of a, a comment I wanted to make based on some questions that have come in. So with regard to smart snacks, the smart snack standards refer to um, items that are, that are sold during the school day, which is defined as midnight to 30 minutes after the end of the official school day. So there were a couple of questions that came in regarding, you know, are you eligible to apply if you sell food at a football game, for example. Um, so it does depend on your award level, um, but definitely note that when we're talking about Smart Snack standards, we're talking about what is um, being sold during the school day. So if you're looking to apply for bronze or silver uh, and you, you do meet that requirement during the school day, then you are eligible to apply um, in that particular section. Um, however, if you do uh, want to apply for a higher level, you'll need to just note on the application there are some um, nuances with the gold application and gold award of distinction that you'll want to pay attention to around smart snacks to make sure that you're you're meeting the the percentage of 
of outside school events that are meeting SMART SMAC standards. So if you have additional questions about that, definitely reach out to us or um, to Ebony, and we'll make sure we get some clarification on that. And then um, other than that, I think those are the, the main questions that came in. Great. Well, that then concludes our webinar today. We will be sending out a follow-up email in two to three business days with a link to the recording, slides, and handouts. Um, so thank you for your time, and everybody have a great day.